the Justice Department effectively called the President of the United States a criminal on Friday as Trump announced the departure of his chief of staff. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> Trump is desperate to talk about anything other than the growing legal problems engulfing his presidency, and you can tell because he's picking fights with everyone from France to China to his own former Secretary of State. He's like a feral raccoon trapped in a corner in the attic. If he loses in 2020, they're gonna have to chase him out with an Oval Office with a broom. Go! Get on! Get out of here! Oh, no! Now he's biting the broom! <laughs> on Saturday, for example, he unleashed an unhinged Twitter rant about Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal and unveiled a new nickname for him, calling him The Dick. <laughs> wow, he's getting angrier and lazier. <laughs> the guy's name is Richard, so you nicknamed him The Dick? Go ahead! Take the rest of the week off. You nailed it. <laughs> then Trump called his former Secretary of State Rex Tillerson dumb as a rock and lazy as hell after Tillerson, in a rare interview, offered some brutal criticism of his former boss. How would you describe Donald Trump? He acts on his instincts. In some respects, that looks like impulsiveness. But it's not his intent to act on impulse. Uh, I think he really is trying to act on his instincts. It was challenging for me, uh, coming from the disciplined, highly process-oriented ExxonMobil Corporation, to go to work for a man who is pretty undisciplined, uh, doesn't, doesn't like to read. That's the former Secretary of State talking about the President of the United States like he's Mowgli. I mean, he doesn't mean to howl and walk on all fours. He, got, he was raised by wolves. <laughs> Although, in fairness to Trump, the reason he doesn't like to read is that he is bad at it, even if he will never admit it. Through their lives, and though their lives, beating expectations in the House for the midterm and midterm year. <laughs> they sacrifice every day for the furniture and future of their children. Instead of saying, instead of saying furniture, excuse me, future, he doubled down on furniture and future. Can you imagine being this guy's Secretary of State? I want to bomb North Dakota. You mean North Korea? I mean North Dakota and North Korea. I meant both. You cut me off before I got to North Korea. And while he fires off one Twitter insult after another, his White House is also undergoing an unprecedented level of staff turnover. People are quitting this White House like it's a Kmart the day before Black Friday. <laughs> and on Saturday, Trump confirmed speculation that Chief of Staff John Kelly would be leaving the White House at the end of the year, which means we're at the end of the John Kelly era. And I just hope that now that his tenure is over, everyone who hailed him as a paragon of discipline and order when he first took over will look back and admit that they were very wrong. Kelly's mission is less drama, more discipline inside the inner circle. He's going to be great, uh, keeping things organized, keeping everyone in their lane. I think he will bring some order and discipline to the West Wing. I hope that he will demonstrate to the president the value of discipline. If anybody can bring order and discipline to this White House, it is General Kelly. I hope that we're at a turning point now. Oh, hey, it's Senator Richard Blumenthal from earlier. And you were right, Senator. It was a turning point. When it started, you were Richard Blumenthal. And when it ended, you were the dick. <laughs> Guess he stayed in his lane. <laughs> Kelly was never going to bring discipline to this White House. For one thing, you can't change Trump. And also, Kelly wanted the same thing as Trump. We all just projected ourselves onto Kelly because his face always looked the way we felt. But now we know that's just his face. That's his everything is going great face. Here he is blowing out the candles on his birthday cake. And here's John Kelly on a roller coaster. In fact, Kelly served a president for whom lawbreaking was apparently so routine that Tillerson had to routinely explain to the president that the things he wanted to do were illegal. When the president would say, well, here's what I want to do, and, and here's how I want to do it. And I'd have to say to him, well, Mr. President, I understand what you want to do, but you can't do it that way. Uh, it violates the law. It violates a treaty. 
The Secretary of State had to explain to the President that what he wanted to do was illegal. I can't even imagine what that was. Yes, Mr. President, we have the technology, but you can't just shoot someone into space. It's illegal, and on top of that, it's your son. <laughs> Trump is fundamentally lawless. Not only does he think he's above the law, he doesn't even understand the law. And on Friday, we got the clearest picture yet of his serial law-breaking. The special counsel in the Russia investigation and prosecutors in New York filed sentencing memos for Trump's ex-campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, and his ex-fixer, Michael Cohen, and they made it pretty clear that the Justice Department has damning evidence on Trump's ties to Russia. In a new court filing, special counsel Robert Mueller says former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort lied about several key points after agreeing to cooperate with prosecutors. Now, this could mean Mueller's team has more evidence about contacts between people close to the president and Russians, but during the 2016 campaign. In November 2015, prosecutors say Cohen spoke with a Russian national who claimed to be a trusted person in the Russian Federation who promised the campaign political synergy and synergy on a government level. Oh, synergy. Trump must have been so pumped when he heard that. See, it wasn't collusion, it was synergy. And now I'm just going to check my thesaurus and son of a bitch! <laughs> and, and, if you thought, if you thought prosecutors were being coy when they used the word synergy instead of collusion, they were much more on the nose in their sentencing recommendations for Cohen. Prosecutors spelled out as clearly as possible in this document that they believe the president of the United States committed a crime by paying hush money to cover up affairs. How do we know that? Well, they didn't mention Trump by name, but according to the court documents, during the campaign, Cohen played a central role in two similar schemes to purchase the rights to stories, each from women who'd claimed to have an affair with individual one, so as to suppress the stories and thereby prevent them from influencing the election. And who is individual one? Well, the court documents are cryptic, but here's one clue. On approximately June 16, 2015, individual one began an ultimately successful campaign for president of the United States. Of course, the only thing worse for Trump than finding out he's individual one would be if he found out he was individual two. <laughs> Who the hell is number one? It's not Hillary, is it? <laughs> so there you go. The court documents say explicitly that individual one committed a felony, and they make clear that individual one is the president of the United States, or as Trump put it on Twitter, totally clears the president. Thank you. <laughs> Now, you might be asking yourself, how could Trump have read these documents and come to the conclusion that they totally clear him? And he explained it to reporters on Saturday. On the Mueller situation, we're very happy with what we are reading because uh, there was no collusion whatsoever. I think it's all turning around very nicely. But as far as the uh, report that we see, according to everybody I've spoken to, I have not read it. You? You didn't read it? Oh, dude, you, you should read it. <laughs> if there was a document that detailed crimes I was implicated in, the only way I wouldn't read it is if I knew what was in it. Trump might as well go full old cowboy and say, I don't have to read it, boy. I lived it. <laughs> well, in lieu of reading, Trump must have spent the weekend psyching himself up because this morning he got up early and gave us all that classic Twitter meltdown we were expecting. And aside from the misspellings, Watch how many times he changes his argument in the span of just two tweets. Democrats can't find a smoking gun tying the Trump campaign to Russia after James Comey's testimony. No smoking gun, no collusion at Fox News. That's because there was, all caps, no collusion. So now the Dems go to a simple private transaction, wrongly calling it a campaign contribution, which it was not. But even if it was, it's only a civil case like Obama's, but it was done correctly by a lawyer, and there would not even be a fine. Lawyer's liability if he made a mistake, not me. Cohen, speaking of Michael Cohen, his former fixer, just trying to get his sentence reduced, all caps, witch hunt. My God, it was legal, but if it wasn't, it was civil, but it was done correctly, but if it wasn't, it's not my fault. <laughs> but to put it away, Donald Trump will understand, where there's smock, there's foyer. <laughs> and let's 
just... Let's just address for a second this argument that Obama did the same thing, because it's an argument Trump supporters are starting to make, and it's insane. Every campaign makes paperwork errors. That happens all the time. And in 2013, Obama's campaign was fined for omitting some donors' names. Independent experts called it relatively minor, and even a Republican lawyer said it was a very clean audit report for the Obama campaign. And let's be honest, there's a huge difference between an accounting error and a hush payment to cover up an affair. If you don't believe me, go home and tell your spouse, I had sex with a porn star and made an accounting error. <laughs> Let me know which one they focus on. <laughs> Trump didn't just make a paperwork error. It's not like he was sitting there with a green eye shade trying to balance the books and miss something. <laughs> Let's see, 50 bucks for pizza, $100 for lawn signs. Oh, $130,000 to pay off a porn star. I almost forgot. I'll put that under utilities. <laughs> Every day, there are new revelations that seem to fade away, but this feels like a watershed. The Justice Department just called the President of the United States a criminal. I don't know if Trump will ever be indicted or impeached, but if he is, he probably won't know what he's charged with because he... Doesn't like to read. This has been a closer look.